what is going on everybody it is me your boy flash jones back again with another video and in this one guys first things first i'm going to show you how to number one assemble the wood decking right and then secondly i'm going to show you how to turn another naked bulkhead flat into one that's got some style on it i.e being the wood deck naked style no wood deck wood deck okay so that being said let's go ahead and jump right on in to this video all right guys so like i said the first thing we're gonna do is show you how i did this how i put these wood planks in on this yellow ttx bulkhead flat car from scale trains that's the first thing we're gonna do after we do that we're going to show you, I'm going to show you, sorry, how I assemble the wood decking onto the oxidized red bulkhead flat car. Um, it should be pretty straightforward, um, but if anything that I see, of course, I will tell you. Um, anything that I mess up, of course, you will see that, and uh, we'll go from there. On a quick side note, there's something that I've already noticed right off the bat. Did you see how on this one, you have a little slit on either end of it, right? Sorry, that's not focusing, but you have a slit on either end, right there, on, on the on the center of that shorty. Well, on this one for the oxidized red one, there are no slits on them. Okay, they're all smooth. Okay, so right off the bat, I can see that there's going to be a little bit of a difference. So I'm going to take my time, and of course, I'm going to stop and pause um, anytime that I need to say something, or um, of course tell you guys what I'm thinking so and here so we go. in the deck um, as you see here this is the deck pieces so you can kind of see there the difference and resemblance of these pieces um, as it compares to the picture from scale trains actual website and so what we're gonna do is, is attempt to glue these parts down um, it looks like it should be fairly straightforward it just looks like they go right in the middle there and um, I actually talked to Scale Trains and they actually recommended canopy glue. Um, this canopy glue dries clear. And that was the main thing that they had pressed was you want a canopy glue that's going to dry clear. Um, so I got this from my local Hobby Lobby. And as you see, that was the price that I paid for it. So you should be able to find something um, quite similar to it. I'm either at a hobby shop or um, model railroad. Um, either Hobby Lobby type place or a train shop or even you know retailers but in, in any event you want some kind of canopy glue at least that's what scale train said um, as you guys have seen in my previous videos that I've built and constructed things I I've been using the wrong glue so on this one I made sure that I got a hold of scale trains and saw and, and, and seeked out or sought out I should say what they recommended for glues so um, they told me to use the pictures that they had online to make um, in order to assemble it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm using their pictures, which is what they said to do in order to aid in the assembling of these um, bulkhead flats. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So um, that being said, we're going to now assemble it. Here we go. So something that I'm noticing right off the bat here. Is that you have different size wood pieces um, here and um, sorry I'm trying to gather myself as you see here this wood piece has three planks on it essentially three individual wood pieces that are essentially you know together but on the real world piece I guess would be similar to that but it is that of it's three then the short guy then two and on this one looking at the bottom of it you have three a shorty and another three but on this guy you have three a shorty and then four so I see that and then I look back at the model and I'm guessing a piece like this one would probably go on you know in, in place like right here because maybe you can see it maybe you can't but this space looks to be shorter than a space like so maybe this space maybe you can see that maybe you don't but I'm actually going to cut out 
all these pieces and then figure out where they go because I don't want to mess this up and put you know the two small pieces in the big spaces and have these big pieces here trying to fit into the corner where they don't fit um, this is there are no instructions for this might I add so uh, I'm hoping maybe somebody has put this out and notice it or hopefully I'm putting this out I know it's late but soon enough that people who are trying to this to do this uh, may be able to rectify the situation and fix it before it's too late but anyways there we go and on a side note just wanted to point out to you just so you guys know what I was doing so on the very ends here and you probably won't be able to see it you may be able to but right there and right here and on every the sides of every piece there's a little snap that's connecting the planks to the frame of the outlying parts of the wood. And all I'm doing is I'm just taking my pocket knife and I'm just shearing through it, you know, and cutting it out. And then I'm going to do the other side and I'm going to cut them all out individually. Um, but that's essentially what I'm doing right now. See you soon. Okay, so. All right, so I have all the pieces cut from the sprue, if you will. And what it comes down to is, like I said, on these, on this set, you have three, a shorty, and another set of three. So essentially seven wood ties. On this guy, you have three, a shorty, and then four planks. So for this one, you got nine. So four, I'm sorry, eight. So four, and essentially another four. But four, three, which is seven, plus the shorty, that makes eight. Okay, so you got that set. And then you got these guys up top. You have three, a shorty, and a two. So you got five plus one is six. So you got a five plank, an eight plank, and then a seven plank. And they all fit accordingly here. And that is the next challenge. So at the end, we're going to recap what we did um, to get a better understanding on how this is all supposed to play out. But... Essentially, that's where we are. Here we go. Okay, so guys, quick overview. And before you ask, no, these pieces are not glued in. They're kind of, I just laid them in to kind of get a view of what I'm looking at. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can get a, um, a better understanding of what I'm about to say. So, be careful when you decide to place these in. And I would I immediately suggest that you do cut them and you do place them in before applying the glue. Place them in, see what they look like, see how they fit. Because some of them, um, I did not trim purposely on the ends because they just fit a little bit more snugly, if that's a word, um, into the... Uh, space is provided and I want that tight fit so that they stay um, that's just my preference if you're a perfectionist go ahead and and you know shave off the ends you can kind of see the ends here if that bothers you go for it like I me personally I want to leave it because it gives it a rustic more used look that's me you don't not everyone's the same you don't have to be like me you can be your own person it's a beautiful thing about model railroading. Do what you want to do. Um, anyways, all I wanted to get at was from right to left. Here, you have yourself a six plank board, right? You have your three planks, and then a shorty, then two more planks. Three plus two, that's five, plus a shorty makes six. Here, you have a another six plank board. Three plus two is five, plus the shorty is six. Then this guy, okay, you have an eight plank board. Four plus three is seven, plus the shorty is eight. And here is a seven plank board. Three and three is six, plus the middle is seven. So, six, six, eight, seven, seven. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out so that you can see this as I do it. This is the entire car now. So, essentially, Six, six, eight. Okay. The back two are sixes, and the third one is an eight. 
Same exact thing on this other side. Six, six, eight. Everything in between was a seven. So this is a seven, you see? Three and three are six plus the middle is seven. So seven, 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 seven. That's the last seven. Does that make sense, guys? So, I did this specifically so that I could see how they laid out. Because clearly, these are not in. I just laid them in, as I said. But in addition to that, um, you, you're going to want to be mindful as how you have to place these in. Because, for instance, this piece, as specifically as it sees, you can see there's two planks, then a short gap. Well, on this space, I could put this in backwards, and it would fit the exact same, but the look of the car would be thrown. There's a little gap that would be used as a tie-down for whatever load would be loaded on this car. If you loaded it wrong, you would cover up that gap. You follow? So make sure you put them in right, just like that. So next guys, I'm going to take the old glue, CA, and glue this thing in. So, here we go. got once again all of the pieces cut from the spur. I then laid them out onto um, their respective and um, um, likely spots for them to fit in because as we talked about already this is a six plank six plank eight plank seven all the way to this end and you have another eight plank and then two sixes and um, I needed to see how they were going to line up before um, calling it done per se. And before I was added the glue and got it all in. Okay. Um, so, like I said, once we laid them in, we laid, uh, we figured out exactly how they were going to line up being because, say for instance, this piece, as I said before, lines up only a specific way as you see it lines up only a specific way according to the number of planks um, that are on each board okay so this six plank board lines up with the two sh with the two small plank well, i'm sorry with the two planks um facing the a end of the car this is the a end but it would be the same thing for the b end the two planks facing the b end of the car there's a break but essentially the end of the car and the higher number of planks facing in but the exact opposite is here the higher number of planks are three planks on this uh, six plank board face the end of the car but you just need to look at that and make sure you see how they're lining up because if you do not you will make the mistake of putting them in backwards now as you guys can see on mine 
none of they are all lined up correctly and that is essentially what it's supposed to look like when it's all done I compared this of course to scale trades website looked at what they had and this is essentially what I came up with So guys, I'm going to leave this and give this some time to set, dry, and cure. Um, we'll finish up the review of this at another time. Um, of course, it'll be a snap of a finger for you, but it'll be probably a few days in between for me. So see you then. In case you guys were wondering what it is that I'm doing with my knife, kind of cutting through, it, it is this. Wait for it. Boom. All right. So, in between these slats, if you will, there's a little bit of. You should be able to see it there. Maybe you can. There's a little bit of a uh, of a connection going here. So, running in between each one of these pieces here. Hopefully, there you go, that might be a little better. One in between each one of these pieces is a little bit of wood or something connecting them all, holding them in place. Same thing, one's at the top per se, one's at the bottom per se. And all I'm doing is I'm taking my knife, I'm just cutting through them. Um, of course, being careful, make sure that I cut in between the gap to split them, as you guys can kind of see that I've already done. You know, you just want to be careful not to go between the actual slats on the actual wood piece. Sorry about that. You don't want to cut in between these pieces here, per se. You want to cut the gap. Gotcha. Okay. Back to the video. Something that I just wanted to point out, as I kind of alluded to earlier, is that the these boards, these uh, the planks, the number of planks on each board differ between the two different styles of wood decking. Okay, what do you mean by that, Flash? This is what I mean. So take, for instance, and let me zoom in here. Take, for instance, this big guy right here. You got a eight plank board right here. Can you see that? You got eight planks. Four plus three is seven plus the shorty makes eight. I got an eight plank board. Nowhere amongst all the boards that were cut out from that sprue are an eight plank board. Up here you got a two plank board, three plank boards, and four plank boards okay and none of them might I add have this slit that you see right there see that little slit that's there for the tie down on the oxidized red one the tie downs are I don't know what you'd call this piece but they're they're next to the divider I guess maybe we'll call that let's call this the divider so this although this is um, also a divider we're not going to call this a divider because this looks like just the middle piece of you know this this whole area I'm sorry I can't find the right words to use but this divider essentially will split up the look just as on this yellow one 
the yellow dividers are dividing up the spaces between them. Yes, you're still going to see this red piece in between these two dividers, but if you, let me see if I can get a better angle on it. There's going to be a height difference. So you see the dividers, i.e. like this one. This one comes up higher than this one in the middle. So those are going to be considered dividers, at least by me, so that I can make this make more sense for you. Um, and so, kind of going back to what I was saying, this is one of the extra planks from, um, from that guy. There's one of, there's the main difference between these two. You can, I mean, pictures a thousand words. You guys can make your own determinations. They're not the same. So you can't mix and match pieces. I mean, I guess you could get creative if you broke one or you kind of lost some of them. But let's hope that you don't get there. Because if you do, I won't know how to help you. Anywho, that's the main difference between these two. TTX yellow, TTX oxidized red. Okay. So, that being said, we're going to now just lay these pieces on and see how they arrange on this oxidized red guy. All right. <laughs> closer at this guy I've, I didn't lay them all in obviously as you can see but all I just want to kind of, kind of get a general understanding of how they were going to look and what I was kind of getting into per se and what I've kind of determined is that sorry about that what I've determined is that of course these four plank boards they're only going to go in certain places considering that there are only three of them so one's going to go here and one is going to go here so one's gonna go here, one's gonna go over there, and the other one might just be an extra because I don't see where it would fit amongst any of the rest of these slats, considering that there are so many of those guys. Now, I'm sure you're probably gonna have a couple extra of these three plank boards, probably a couple extra, or one or two of these um, two plank boards, and I'm gonna guess just one extra four plank board. In any event, um, I just wanted to see what this was going to look like. Now we're going to go ahead and start gluing this stuff down and getting it in. Um, I'm probably going to start from the middle area, or I might start from this end. Um, start with these two and start working my way back and get to the other end because um, I'm not sure if you're able to tell, but I was struggling quite heavily to get this last guy in on this end. And it's, of course, it's a two plank board, but it's such a small window down in there. Such a small window in here that I kept turning this thing on its side, trying to slide it into position. Um, maybe I need to shave down the sides. That's definitely possible. Um, but <laughs> it's already giving me fits. So um, watch me work.
guys. So, I got this guy fully, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I have it fully um, clothed, per se. I got all these wood planks, wood boards glued on. And this is what I have come to know. It's not hard to do. It's tedious. You're going to get glue on your fingers. Um, and if you are too rough, you will break these little wood uh, planks, these wood boards. What do I mean by that? Okay. Starting from this end, and this is the A end. Starting from the A end, we're going to move to the B end. This guy in the far end, the two plank board, this is the only location, I'm sorry, this location, and then across two more, that location, and then on the B end, you have two more here, and I, of course, against the bulkhead. So essentially, one on each bulkhead, as you see, and then you count one, two, and there's another two piece board, uh, two plank board. Um, what I like so what I've come to notice about this um, is that it is quite tedious these pieces here that are against the bulkhead are the probably the uh, the hardest ones to get in I think one of them actually slid in with ease um, the others did not um, it was actually quite tough getting these pieces in and so um, with that being as it was I had to kind of use my my fingernails to kind of help push these pieces down and in because even with my little bamboo stick skewer pointer deal I couldn't get the right pressure in the right spots to push these in so you might nest you might it might be necessary um, for you to have some fingernails I guess I don't know I don't know any other way to push those in but essentially all of the rest of these boards like I said you have a couple four plank boards you only use two of them one there and one here but other than that it's all of these um, three plank boards and what I meant by breaking them as you guys can kind of see here you should see there's a little rift let me turn it on its side you see that little rift right there right where the three little holes are right there I was pressing with my finger I'm trying to push it in place and I cracked it um, is it that big of a deal no because you end up having two extras as you see and the same thing with your two plank boards you have two extra and then of the four plank boards you only have one extra um like i said this is one of the planks from the yellow ttpx bulkhead flat and you do see how they differ um in um style i guess um if you needed to get fancy they are about the same length you could of course figure out a way to cut these off and use them and splice them in if you really absolutely needed to i hope that you don't have to because i've not sure how you're going to do that anywho so I got this one in and um, I'm probably going to include um, the installation on this one but it'll be real quick overview style I may or may not even include that it, it, it just depends on if it's any different from the other one that you see in the far left corner there um, but um, things you're gonna you're definitely going to need are going to be some napkins I had some tissue because I'm just like I said, I'm in the hotel and then I use these little bamboo um, food skewers um, to kind of help lay the glue where I needed it to be in addition to um, helping me to push the boards and put the pressure on them. Um, something that I was doing, if in case you weren't able to see it, is once I put these pieces down where I want them to be, I would lay this bamboo skewer across the planks, press down, press down, and kind of just roll with a good amount of pressure on it. Of course, you don't want to crack the model. It is pretty sturdy, but um, putting pressure on it in order to get um, a good adhesion between the board and the model um, itself, the flat car itself. And then, of course, you're going to need um, some sort of CA glue. I use this canopy glue because that's what Scale Trains recommended. It was about five bucks. And when it was all said and done with taxes. And then, of course, you're gonna need your models. Um, that one was pretty obvious, but essentially guys It's tedious it, this this video right now is pushing an hour and a half by the time I edit it and fast forward a lot of it um, It's going to look as though it was I don't know two three minutes, but um, This one alone was 
going on in an hour and a half. And that yellow one back there was about 30 minutes. Um, so this that's definitely something you want to keep in mind when getting into this is you are definitely going to need some time. You do not want to cut these guys out and then start to assemble this and then walk away from it because these are so light, they will blow, they will blow away. They will blow away. So you're going to definitely want to be careful about that. Um, other than that, um, gonna, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to start the installation on the yellow guy back there and so that I have all three of these done. Um, that being said, um, I'll see you guys. Okay guys, so I have just now finished the installation of the wood deck on the second bulkhead flat car from Scale Trains. And what I can tell you is the second that I finished is I looked at the time on this video and it had just ticked 18 minutes. Now I was not aiming for speed, I was simply just doing it. Um, at the pace that I felt comfortable doing it, I'm watching a little TV at the same time on my tablet. You know, something um, that I'm, I've been watching, a little something called First Take with Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman. You know, all these people here, sports commentators, sports analysis people, any, anywho, anywho. I've been watching that, you know, and I've been doing this, uh, this uh, assembly of the deck. And like I said, it took just above or no, just right at took right at 18 minutes in order to complete this. The red one, which I did just literally previous to doing this one, took over an hour. And I can't remember off the top of my head now, but I think it was like an hour and 23 minutes or something like that. But it was over or close to an hour and a half to put every single one of those little tiny planks into their sockets. Um, and so, as you guys can clearly see, there's a nice difference in contrast, shade, color, and size of the wood planks between the yellow and the oxidized red. Um, if you cannot see it, I'm going to help you out really, really quickly. Literally, the size of one of these... Um, eight plank boards I'm sorry seven plank boards three three six to seven okay just one of these um, seven plank boards is quite literally the size of two let me get right here in the center so you can see it literally the size of two of the individual three plank boards and this little shorty here in the middle that you see that will be for the tie down there is separated by a buffer if you will a divider and so literally there's only one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen so there's eighteen planks on the yellow which means there's at least at the very minimum at least thirty six planks on this red one. I'm going to count it just for posterity's sake. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And I'm only halfway. 19, 20, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So literally, double the amount of work, double the amount of work 
on a yellow one in order to do the red one. Um, don't let that discourage you guys because it still looks really good. It's still a great looking model. I would never want to discourage you from getting it just because it's a little bit harder. Um, if anything, you should take it as a challenge and see if you can do it on your own. Um, you know, I didn't know how this was going to work out for me. It just happened to work out. I think it worked out pretty great. Um, you know, the glue, I'm looking at this this yellow one in the back that I did first. I don't, uh, there's a little bit of residue hanging there, but all the residue is clear, you know, and all of it that's visible can easily be easily knocked off. And I'm just barely scraping it with this little, you know, this little uh, food skewer. And I'm easily getting off, you know, any access that I can see that I'm sure you probably cannot see um, looking at it, you know, through the camera. But in any event, um, I am finally, finally done with the installation of the deck for these three bulkhead flat cars from scale trains. Um, my final thoughts on this is red one is tedious. It's going to take the longest, but it's also the most detailed. Take your time. Um, you only, you, I think you only have three, two different, three different size boards. You have a two plank in the corner, a three plank, a three plank, another two plank, and then a four plank. So you have a four plank, a three plank, and a two plank. That's it. And then on the yellow ones, you have a seven plank, an eight plank, and a three, five, six plank. So six, seven, and eight plank boards. Um, so the same, I don't say the same number, but the same, there are only three different styles of boards for both yellow and for both red. The three different styles, just different number of planks per board. Um, but like I said, it is a little tedious on the red. Um, but it looks good, and I think you're. I think that most people will definitely enjoy these running on their layouts, whether they be empty or loaded. Um, it does have a pretty decent weight to it. Um, I don't know. I can't tell exactly what it is off, you know, from weighing it, but it's it's got a good weight, so it should track well. Um, I wouldn't put it at the head end of a heavy train because you might streamline it, but it's still got a good weight to it. Um, anywho, um, I will take some pictures. I will post them. Um, but take your time with it. I'm sure some of you guys who weather it are going to be able to give some much better pointers on how to make this look good and hide any uh, issues that you may have had uh, much better than um, than I was able to. Um, I'm not a big weather. I hope to get into that much later on in my uh, career as a model as a model railroader. Um, so I'll worry about that at a later time. Uh, but anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you, this helped you guys. Um, if you needed help, I hope it corrected you if you were making any mistakes. I hope you're able to use the information that I was able to acquire um, in the assembly of this thing, of these uh, flat cars. I hope the information that I acquired will help you in, the, in your assembly. Um, let me know what you guys think of it. Let me know if there's anything I can do to improve. Let me know um, if this helps you at all. Um, till then, guys, I'm tired. It's going on 10 o'clock tonight. Um, I wanted to cram this in and get this done and get these videos done so I could put them out to you. Um, I hope you guys have fun out there. Um, again, have fun, run trains, post your videos. I want to see it. Um, and I'm sure other people do too. Until then, happy Thanksgiving. Have fun on Black Friday. Be safe. Be careful. Hopefully they have some good deals on trains. Um, but until then, God bless. Good night.